Hi everyone, Rich Crescenti here with another in our series of videos making music with Melodyne. And today is part one of our series covering the macro controls. And today's video is done using Melodyne Essential. So all of you new users out there with Melodyne Essential, these tips will apply to you. Now, as I mentioned before, we're going to be covering the macro controls. And macro means large or on a larger scale. So what these allow you to do is paint with a very broad brush and apply some processing to all of the notes or to a specific group of notes across the board. So let's dive in and take a look at this right here. Now we see that there are three specific macros in Melodyne. There's the correct pitch macro, the quantized time macro, and the note leveling macro. Today we're going to be focusing on the correct pitch macro. So we've got a vocal here. Let's just give this vocal a listen. Can't you see that I won't let go? Okay, great. Now I want to apply some processing to this and we've got this right here. And as I mentioned before, you can do this to all of the notes or a group of notes. And this is done using the selection. If no notes are selected, this macro will apply its correction across all of the notes that Melodyne is on for this track. If you'd like to apply this correction to specific notes, you can select them just like by drawing across it like this. Very clean and simple. All right, so let's look at these controls, right? When we open this up, we're gonna see here's our pitch center, and this allows us to adjust the pitch of the notes. We see our pitch drift. We're gonna come back to that in a little bit. So I want you to look at these notes right here. You'll see that some of these notes are close to the original pitch center, right? They're the desired pitch center. Here we see like this note and this note right here are pretty close to this F sharp. This note right here and this note right here are much more ambiguous, right? They kind of live in the land between two notes right there. And I want to point this out because this macro works intelligently in that the first thing that it starts processing are the notes that are furthest away from a pitch center. So watch what happens to those specific notes when I move this. In the earliest ranges, I want to point out that only those, those two notes are moving. Those are the two notes that are furthest away from a pitch center. As I get further on, we start to see uh, some other notes come in. As I get even further, some more notes, and when I get towards the end, all of the notes are moving in right there. So this is nice because what it goes after first are the most egregious problems. However, I want to point something out right here. As I move these closer, you'll notice that this note moved closer to the B, which is in the key of our song. Our song is in the key of E major. You can see that right there. However, this note moved closer to G, which is not in the key of our song. And that's because the correct pitch macro moves notes closest to whatever pitch center they are already closest to. However, we do have a control here that can help us out, which is the snap to chord scale. And watch what happens when I press this. This note right here will jump down to this note. When I press that right there, that note jumps down. So what this does is then constrain the movement of these notes to the key that you are working in or the chord specifically that you are working in right there. And it applies to either. Okay, so now what I can do is move these notes kind of where I want them and get them in close. You can go all of the way or you can kind of adjust to what feels best to you. And we'll come back to that in just a little bit right here because I want to point out another control which is include notes edited manually. You'll notice that's grayed out right now. And that's grayed out because I have not edited any notes manually. So let me come over here and just take this note and I'm just going to move this note uh, a little bit manually and then select all these again and now when we look at this control we see that this option is available right here this is useful because maybe what you've done is gone through and done some pitch correction and you don't want to alter that if that's the case then I would leave this unchecked that way all of the work that you've done will not be altered in any way if you decide that you'd rather just swipe right over that, then you can check this box right here. And now notes that have been edited manually will move. For example, if this is not checked, you'll notice that note does not move no matter what. And if I check this box, now that note will move to the closest note in the key at this moment right here. Okay, now there's a couple other quick things that I want to show you, right? Let's say, for example, that I have pitch corrected using the macro 
a group of notes. I'll take these, for example, and let's move these over here to 50% or so. Uh, now, at once I've done that, maybe I select all of these notes. And now when I open up the macro, you'll notice we have a different set of numbers right here. We've got 0 to 42. And this is telling you that using the macro, some notes have already been corrected up to 42%, and some notes are still at zero. This is telling you this because once I move this macro, they're all going to come together to the same percentage, right? If I just move this a little bit, now they are all there. So those numbers let you know, hey, you're adjusting something that you already may have where you want it. All right, so let's move this over to 80% because there's something else that I want to show you right here. And this is sometimes you may do some broad brush processing like this. And because it's very broad and automatic process, you may start to get some artifacts that don't sound good. That's fine. There is no automatic process that works as well as careful, considerate human pitch correction. So let me show you something right here. Maybe you'll get this to 80% and then everything will sound good except for one note. Sometimes one note will be a little bit weird and you want to go in and do some manual controls. One way that I like to do that sometimes is by cutting a note. So in Melodyne Essential, let's say I wanted to separate this. This looks like this might actually should be two notes. So I'll go to my note assignment mode and scroll down and look at this one right here and come to the note separation tool. And I'll decide that I want to cut this note right there. Okay, and change that into two. Now when we go back into our edit mode, you'll notice this is two notes right here. However, if I select these and open up the macro, those are at 0%. And that's because when you cut a note, it triggers a fresh detection so it can figure out which note each one of those blobs should be. So just letting you know that if you cut a note, you'll lose what you've done before at the macro. You may have to go back in and readjust those. Okay, great. Now there is another control right here, which is drift. Let's talk about this one for a minute. Now, drift is really useful in a situation like so, when I've got a note that tends to fall off at the end. And we'll see this one right here. Let's give this a listen. I won't let go of again. You'll see I've already got some pitch drift done on there. I'm going to undo that for a quick second. And look at how this falls off right there. Let's hear this one again. You can really hear her fall off a little bit at the note at the end of the note right there. And that's what drift is, right? The slow moving away from the note over time. What I would like to do in this particular case is select all of these notes and then come up here and adjust that drift to where that note moves into place where we want it. Now when we listen to this, I won't let go of again. And there we held that note much better at the end. I like that a lot. This is drift is really useful for those kind of notes right there. All right, let's go back to the first one that I had selected right here because I want to show you something else. And that is how to work with this. So there's a particular way that I like to work with this, two particular ways that I like to use this. One, I want to get everything kind of close until the artifacts start, and then I can go in and do any fine tuning from there. So a common process that I will do is put this in loop mode and so that it'll play over and over and over again. And while we let it play, I'm going to mute this just so we can kind of talk while this is happening. But while I let this play, I'm going to make some adjustments. And I'm going to decide uh, to move everything close. And what this allows me to do is get to the point where I have some artifacts and then stop there and go and do some fine tuning. Let's give this a listen while it's unmuted. Can't you see that I won't let go? Can't you see that I won't let go? Can't you see that I won't let go? I like that. That feels like there's been some correction done to this, but I might want to go and do some fine tuning after that. So this has done a lot of the heavy lifting for us. Very useful. Now, another common technique that I will use this on is when I am tracking vocals, especially stacking harmonies and additional vocals. For every new vocal that I record, they're going to be referencing the previous vocal. And I want that pitch to be bang on 
while they're recording. So when I'm stacking vocals, no matter what, I will across the board just ram this pitch center all the way and same with the drift while we're recording so their pitch reference is perfect. And then afterwards, when it's time to go in and edit the song more carefully and considerately, I will then back off and start over and apply the judicious processing as needed. Hope you've enjoyed this today. Thanks.